Hi, I'm Carolyn Claire Bridges, and we're all on this together. I am excited yet challenged to be speaking to you today. I'm excited because I've been given such an amazing opportunity to speak about such a pressing matter. However, I'm challenged because there are so many moving parts that I won't be able to go into every nook and cranny and do it justice with the short amount of time that I'm given. But I do hope that you all are able to take something away from the time that we're about to spend together. According to the Carbon Majors database conducted by the CPD, which is an international non for profit, merely 100 companies generate 71% of our global annual carbon emissions. And the top 10 alone produce 36% of the total global carbon emissions. But all of those companies have one thing in common. They all profit off of an industry that generates money through non-renewable resources like coal, oil, and natural gases. And as we know, coal and oil and natural gases are non-renewable. They take millions of years to form through intense heat and pressure. But now that we know that they're the culprit for the majority of our carbon emissions, we're left with a bigger question. Are there any sustainable solutions? You know, something that meets the needs of the present, but doesn't cost us the future. That also hits three markers, being economically feasible, ecologically viable and socially desirable. So is it good for the environment? Do people wanna do it? And will we still make a profit? Will the economy still be fine? Fine. <laughs> uh, well, yes, there are solutions and I am sure that you all are familiar with majority of them, if not all. So we have solar, wind, hydro, which is water, and geothermal. There are resources that can be replenished as quickly as they're being used. And personally, I think that working with what the environment has to offer us is a lot more beneficial than going against it, drilling holes to find an energy source when, you know, in Florida where we have sunny days almost every single day. So, you know, solar would be great for relying that relying on that for energy. But in Chicago, I mean, that wouldn't really be the best option. You would want to go with wind. So figuring out what each environment has to offer and utilizing that to the fullest extent. And in addition to the clean energy industry being a sustainable practice, Forbes reported from the Clean Jobs America report that it also generates high wage stable jobs for blue collar workers and 3.3 million Americans work in that industry. So that's for every for every one fossil fuel industry worker, it's three clean energy industry workers, triple the amount. That's insane. Additionally, uh, a Pew Research study conducted in 2017 found that around 68% of Americans wanted to expand the clean energy industry, whereas only 27 wanted to continue in the fossil fuel industry. So to recap, the clean energy industry is not only a socially desirable, as seen with the Pew Research study, but it's also economically feasible and ecologically viable, making it hit all three markers of being a sustainable solution. Uh, but, you know, how do we go about getting there? Referencing chapter six of the power of renewable opportunities and challenges for China and the United States, we start by lowering our consumption of energy. So, you know, unplugging idle electronics, turning off the lights when we leave places, switching to LED bulbs. Um, and while we do that, 
the type of energy that we consume being green energy goes up. Uh, that's one way we can start. Another way is to look at the Green New Deal. And while factcheck.org did basically say that it's kind of just a plan of attack and nothing will really occur unless separate legislation is enacted, it really gives a lot of hope and a lot of promise to what we could do. And that it's not a, a dream that is unachievable. It's, it's a dream that we can actually achieve. There are other ways that you can combat your carbon emissions. You don't have to just go from a legislative point of view, which that is great, that is amazing, that is encouraged. You have to hold these companies accountable. However, if you want to create immediate action, you want to feel like you are making a difference because you are, here are some things that you can do. But before I get into that, it is important to note that altering your lifestyle for the betterment of the environment, it's challenging. It is challenging because it can be more expensive and it can be more inconvenient. I would know, I'm vegan. It can be very inconvenient, very inexpensive as I've said multiple times. <laughs> um, but you know, you get the hang of it and there, are, you know, you can reduce the amount of carbon emissions by consuming less meat. You know, maybe one meal a week, you're able to substitute it for a meat alternative or, you know, a bunch of chickpeas and legumes. <laughs> uh, another way, you've heard this a million times, you're gonna hear it a million times more, is to bike, take the bus, or walk to wherever you need to go if possible. I know that's not always the safest thing for people to do, and given the current circumstances, it's probably not the most sanitary thing, driving on a bus. But if you're able to, that is highly encouraged. It reduces the carbon emissions you would use to drive there separately. You know, you can always carpool too. Um, there are other ways like composting, um, thrifting. Thrifting is great. There are so many online shops. There's Depop, there's Poshmark, uh, ThreadUp. There are so many shops online and there are a lot of shops in person too. <laughs> there's so many community thrift shops, so you'll be supporting your local economy as well. Uh, to continue, buying locally, locally created items, uh, produce, um, bread, I always went to the market uh, in my town to get a loaf of bread each week. It was amazing, fresh. You're supporting your local farmers, bakers, artists, and in general, your local economy, which is always great. There's also bringing your reusable water bottles, your silverware, your utensils. Um, that can be a bit more challenging bringing utensils. There are great websites online that you can find sustainably and ethically created items um, that hold uh, you know, wooden uh, spoons, forks, knives, uh, super small, they wrap up. Um, there is a market in St. Petersburg, Florida called Sands. Uh, they do no packaging. So they have compostable packaging or glass packaging, refillable shampoos, all that. That is a great shop if you're ever in St. Pete to check it out. Um, and I think those are just a couple of things that you can do to reduce your waste, just being more conscious in general. With that in mind, here are some ways that you can take immediate action. I hope that through this time that we have shared together, I've been able to adequately address the threat that we all face. And by no means am I an expert, nor do I even see myself as an expert. But I wish that my talk has inspired you and reminded you that you are able to create change and that every single step towards a more sustainable future is a step in the right direction.
Thank you.